fearsome heroes you can run into in the mid game if he has a good laning stage. EG should be aware of this. And he's also a pretty good matchup against Gyro during the duration of Shadow Dance. And when it's over, maybe you can disengage. You have so much burst going into Gyro, which most melee cores actually can't do because they just get Rocket Barrage to death. But Slark has that, uh, that ability in Shadow Dance to actually take the fight to a Gyro in melee range. So I think CDC have a very well-rounded draft with that last pick. And I think EG were taken completely off guard by it. That said, though, they have their own comfort picks. Yeah, that they do. It's, it's all about the comfort zone fear. Another game to be played over on Gyro, while Skywrath Mage, you get a two for now for AUI 2000. And Samal on the Ember Spirit, we had a wonderful display of his talents on that hero just a couple of days ago here on the main stage in Key Arena. And it was absolutely superb. And with an Undying, you always feel like that early game pressure is going to be strong. And it looks like that's exactly what EG are trying to achieve. They'll move Universe up to the top, Samel to the mid, so they can run a, an aggressive tri lane at the start with Fear PPD as well as Aoi together. And this means that C-Deck, well, it's not really going to change their lanes that much anyway. They're already planning on pushing that Latrak into the mid and the Darkseer to the offlane. It's going to be interesting to see. If this is a try on try lane, it's the lane to watch. That's just how Dota works. When two try lanes meet, there's bound to be a lot of action. And even if they're, let's say there's no action, then one team is just flat out out farming the other because else they will be looking to get an advantage via kills. As you see, Aggressive's position, he's already looking for the early attack down here, putting the Observer Ward inside the lane. So you'll understand just how far EG moved down. Garda is the man doing the block on the wave, and then Darkseer is moving over. So Darkseer will remain on the bottom for the start. So it's, it's the Slark who's now actually teeping himself up to top. So they've split their lanes up already. Yeah, they just waited for whatever information they could get. They see the aggressive dual lane that EG were planning, and they just decide it's not worth it. I actually think they might have had a shot at it, but the Slark versus Clock matchup is good for Slark. Uh, now, of course, he's going to get the help of Q's Visage. And looks like PPD will be rotating up with the Undying. And at the same time, Fear in that offlane with Gyro will not be finding as much as he would like. And in the previous Gyro games, we've seen Fear has been getting a lot of farm. This lane is not that easy for him to play the Gyro against. They have decent kill potential at level, especially level 3. And Aggressive's not having the greatest start to his time. He didn't level up Pounce to start with. He leveled up Essence Shift instead. And that might have been because he realized he'd be going up against a hero like a Clockwork. So the man has been completely burnt out of him already. And with the creep pull off the side, he's still going to find his levels coming up shortly. That's just a contest for farm. And Fear, actually, they keep this dual lane off lane with Fear and, and AUI together. Try and keep XZ. Like they, they can't keep him away from the farm, but maybe they can at least force him away from the lane. Hey, just see how much the teams are adapting. The moment the Skywrath rotates bottom, it's not a winning lane for CDC anymore. So they just go and stack the jungle instead now with Garter on the line, and maybe he will rotate top. Like, they're constantly, both teams, adjusting to solve the laning problems that they may have. And right now, I think EG are pretty happy with the lanes they've got. So Mel is doing pretty well in mid, as per usual. Again, this is not a matchup that I would give Ember any sort of edge in, but he's still winning the super early exchanges against Shiki. He's just... As far as the first few minutes in lane go, he just seems to be the better mechanical player in this matchup. He might be having a little bit of health at the moment. AUI was able to pick up or, uh, an invis room, and he's going to walk his way in towards the mid lane. He'll find Garda here, and oh. well, terrific smoke time from CDEC. Yes. AUI's invis room instantly triggers it, and you're not going to be carrying around dust or anything which can counter what was just done anyway. That's the shortest duration smoke we've seen at the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> instantly cancelled. Actually, did absolutely nothing. Well, what it did, it did, it did give them information. So, even though he doesn't get the gank, he knows that Skyrath is there, but they can't really use it for anything. So, mm -hmm. very good rotation from AUI. In fact, he already just head down the bottom. He cancelled the clarity of the dark seer, which is actually going to make it a little bit more difficult for Rexy to keep these iron shells up on the lane, but he doesn't have his soul ring just yet. The bottle has already been like ferried out to the mid lane, so he has to wait for the courier to get back. By that point, he should probably have the money for it. And Shiki really needed this too. Like, his creep wave's gonna let him catch up to the farm. But he needs to be able to zone out Samal a lot more than what he currently is. Well, Ichi, top lane universe, Garda. Trying to come around the corner. People are still waiting in the tree line. C Deck have no vision of this at all. But they have to know he's around. If they go for an aggressive play, PPD can skill either Soul Rip or Tombstone. He's holding his point for now. Because he wants to see what. 
uh, what solution he needs to go for. If they if they get the chance to just burst someone down in the cogs, we might see him just kill the soul rip. But I think the more defensive of those two abilities in a lot of cases that could arise up here would actually be the tombstone just to slow down CDC on their way in and universe can just cog and run out. Their gank did not work out. The lion is going to rotate again. And this is a lot of time without finding levels. Then again, he can't do the pull on the bot lane anyway, because the Observable is still blocking up the camps. A little bit further to the right, so it's not actually on the magic push, so it's not blocking up both the camps inside the Radiant Jungle. But for now, Agata, right underneath the Dire Observable, he thinks he's being uh, stealthy by walking into the tree lines there, but Samel knows exactly what's going on. His Flame Guard will come off cooldown in a moment, and in fact, they've also rotated in AUI 2000. So by knowing this, they can try and go for a counter gank. Yeah, if he stays there for too long, he's first blood. It's going to be very easy for EG once Samel hits level 6. He's almost there. Carter will decide against it. Yeah, he actually saw AUI walk across the lane. That's the reason why he backed up. Universe getting very top close on yeah. the top lane. There's a Cog's going to drag in the slot. Now he's looking for that pounce. While PPD removing a lot of his life, he pounces up and away. The rock is still available here from Universe. He'll get Vision back on this slot again. And you got Decay in just a moment. In fact, it's back off cooldown again. But with the support coming in from Shiki, they have to back up. It's a male. It's a trip spirit. Get out of the facade. Evil Genius is finally, they'll be the ones to spill the first blood. And it'll be on the Visage after an interesting initiation from Universe. Such a great play call from EG to go back there. Instead of diving onto the Slark, they realize there has to be a TP coming out from the, from the Lesh. And then they TP their own in turn. And Ember just the more impactful hero in that engagement, the way it turned out. Very, very good map movements here. And what a great time to also rotate it in. It, it was still the Undying who got the last hit. So PPD was the man with the extra cash, but there's nothing, anything, there's never a bad time to give money to an undying. Even if PPD does play that fifth more sacrificial position. And while all that was going on, like you TP out heroes, you've got Fear finding his level six on bot lane. So attacking into this gyro on the bot is very suicidal. Because you'll be coming underneath cooldown. And the Slark's not really in a position where, like, aggressive is not finding momentum on this Slark at all. Which is something he really needs. Uh, he's not getting as much farm as he would like right now. The, the farm is favoring EG quite a lot, as a matter of fact. They're 1,500 gold ahead with just one kill. And that's just lane farm. There's been no towers pushed at all. It's a very good start for them. And if you're CDC, you probably look for a timing window that is Lion hitting level 6 and Slark hitting level 6. Then your heroes start really taking off and being able to, to gank very easily. And Lion will get a lot of experience shared here with Shiki, who of course takes the gold. We'll be rotating into mid again. As Q right now is taking experience there, and he has to be careful. Samel can solo him easily. But Lion is, of course, in the neighborhood to help him out, should Samel fall for the bait. And if Samel does initiate onto that other side, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Very difficult to bring in help for that. Observerwald's going to finally time out the bot lane, so CDEC, they lose vision of what's happening with EG on their bot lane, for now at least. But these iron shells keep pushing the way back out again, as now Somali does actually jump in. He goes over on Q with the flame guard up. He will be hexed, but he's not in range for the burn. Just back far enough, and then the hook shot from Universe. He wants to finish the job. No rocket available. Somal barely able to escape. Universe with the cogs will buy himself a little bit of space here. We'll have a rocket up in a moment, even Fear TP didn't try and have some part in that. A level 1 rocket is not enough to find that kill, and Universe knows it. Just look at how fast the teams are reacting. To He's still going to give it a shot. Game. That's, that's not enough. It's, no, it's actually short as well. Middle lane, Samal jumping in again. Can't get the Searing Chains. The stun, the call out from Fear. Trying to buy more space. Samal wouldn't do any more extra damage, but it might open up enough for Fear to get this kill on Garda as Universe actually cold forced himself down. And this will be a kill for Fear, but Universe trapped underneath the tier one tower. The kill will come in for Versace with a lightning damage as well from Latrac. EG severely punished as again see that bring in reinforcements. And again, we're going now on top. Which is BPD getting just attacked by aggressive a little bit. This is what does happen sometimes from EG. Samel is such a hyper aggressive player, and if the enemy team is ready for it, a play like that is just not going to work. That was really a deep dive. Lion was still in position, and he just he lost his flame guard too fast. This it's the price he pays. I think in this game maybe he should have gone for a 204 build instead of a 303. 
yes, you get a lot of damage on the Searing Chains, but hey, the extra 150 tank universe... Oh, shot coming in with the Battery Assault. He's going to try and control the track. No option for a split Earth, and now in comes Samael with the extra jump in, but the double stun going to keep Universe and Samael back. He wanted to slide a fist and then just get the Searing Chain, if possible, onto the retreating Visage but unable to find the combination. And while all of this is quietly happening, or <laughs> not quietly happening, while all of this is happening, Darkseer and Skyraf are quietly farming in the bottom lane. EG want to make sure AOI gets a Mystic Flare at a reasonable timing so he can combine with the Clockwork. He also has really good combination with the Ember, of course, with the Slide of Fist into Searing Chains. If that's level four for the three second duration, it's more than enough to find a kill on most of the Radiant Heroes with the Flare. Of course, we haven't talked so much about Xia. He has just mainly been staying in the bottom lane. And he is getting a lot of farm now as a result of all the action that's been going on elsewhere. And that could make for a fast mech for CDEC, whereas the one on EG will be a lot later if they're getting one at all this game. The last time we saw it, we built over, over on the Skyrath Mage and AUI. Well, they have been giving him a lot of space in that bot lane. The same, same thing's been happening for the Undying, but BPD went into the Arcane Boots instead. He is a natural mech carrier. But you can't have both your supports taking most of the farm on the map. And you have to get mana on a dying. This hero has a lot of spam potential with enough of a mana pool. And without arcane boots or some sort of other item to compensate for that, you just don't get enough Universe. Your hero. Where's that vision? He doesn't have it on the heroes. Now we'll actually see one, but misses the hook shot. Ooh. He's actually trying to have a go with the Lashrak. And Q destroyed the rune, right? So. AUI just got the single rune this time around, the bounty rune at bottom. And classic CDC play. They're gonna rotate top. This, now Darkseer is getting active, he's level eight. So they're looking to take the first tower of the game very quickly here, as EG planning on maybe finding a trade bottom combined with a gank. If they get both of these, this would be very, very good for them. And I don't think CDC are gonna expect this, although and Shiki, maybe he does. He's actually playing back very defensively. He's not sure about it. He's moving over towards PPD as well as Universe, actually going through the tree line to try and break the smoke while in middle lane is Q and Garda coming in. They're looking for the kill on Samel. The spirits out for Samel. One out enough life to survive this. Support's coming in from Universe towards PPD. They throw down the tombstone and fear it needs to be a big cooldown and it will be a catch out too. The new flank out of damage as well. The Universe dropping very, very quickly with the lighting and the familiar drops. There's a double kill for the Lashrak. They're looking for more. PPD removing a little bit of the life, but supports arrived in here. It's aggressive, going on fear. It's a triple kill for the Lashrak, and PPD on the run. No stuns for the Familiars, but they got some decent damage surging in the slug. He does not pounce the bubble, but there's that Iron Shell combo with the death mark packed. There's a kill for the slug, and CDAC. Momentum is coming their way again. A sharp spike to the Golden Experience graphs. They just knew what was happening. They got the top tier one for free. EG were trying to trade for bottom, but they weren't fast enough, so Fear left it. And they just know that, of course, they're going to be rotating into mid to gank Shiki, and they're very quick to respond with their own rotation from above. Universe. All usage there. Get a hook shot bottom lane, aggressive. Thought he was fine, but EG, they at least get, at least get the consolation prize. And now this combo being online. This, you're going to see more of this in this game. It's 100% certain that Universe and AUI will be grouping up more. Their ultimates, it's another thing about Clockwork Skyrath that isn't talked about so much. Their ultimates combo very well, and you, like you catch them in place and you just blow them up. But they also have very similar cooldown. So they just very naturally will be able to, to gank at the same time. And so this bottom tower might actually fall now as well. So EG, the last fight didn't go well, but if this gank transitions into a tower as well, they ended up getting a fairly even trade at the end of the day. Darkseer wants to surge in for the denial, and PPD doesn't want to let him have it. And he won't. Skyrath Mage will take the last hit. Meanwhile, in mid lane, it looks like Garda's coming forward. There's your Hex over on Fear with a slide of Fist with Chains, not doing any work. Fear just explodes to see that. And Samel's forced back further. He's not having a good game on Gyro this time around, which is a really big problem for EG. This hero doesn't play too well from behind compared to some other carries, and I want to say both Ember and Gyro dependent on a good early game. He's died twice on Ember, he's died three times on the Gyro. And you compare that to CDC with one dead on the Shrek and one death on the Slark. They're just getting the better exchanges early on. You're right, CD, CDEC, they've, they've moved around perfectly, the team fights have been going their way more, and this has resulted in the Shrek having almost 6k net worth. 
A lot of it, a lot of money coming into this, and we know the power of Latrak when he gets farmed up. This isn't like game one. This isn't a support Latrak. It is a core, and a quickly progressing core as well. And Shiki's having a, a better game than in the last game. And in the last game, he was still very impactful, even though he had a couple of deaths that maybe could have been avoided. He still dealt so much damage and took a lot of focus for EG in the fights. And it's what CDC are doing right, which the panelists actually talked about. The first Leshrac pick we saw at the main event was, L uh, was LGD giving it to VP, I think. And VP went with Leshrac together with Queen of Pain, and they were like, the way you play a core Lesh is that you pick it together with a strong carry so that you have a mix of physical and magical damage, and it's very DPD. hard to sort of focus. Oh, shots down from Universe. The Tombstone's also going to be in the neighborhood, and there's your Skyrath Mage combo. Samal wants to come in and be careful. This guy's walking around with DD with a familiar drop. Perfect timing coming in from z -Day. The call down will force CDAC to move back behind their Tier 2 tower. I don't think they're done yet. Aggressive. Good out. Nice cog from Universe, keeping that Slark at bay. The Familiars are still moving forward, and, uh, well, no drop down. Actually, it will be over on Fear, but PPD is still standing his ground. No more real initiation there from Evil Geniuses. EG have the way superior vision here. CDEC are not interested in engaging uphill where their ward isn't. Their ward is here, however, so they will see Universe getting in position. They need that slow. The Lightning's gonna do the job. The Surge not break should bring Lashrak in range. This should actually tell them there is a ward. You see Universe pinging it out. There's no way that Lightning is able to hit him at nighttime. So he's pinging his location where he got hit, and they will probably try to sentry this one out. It's uh, too far away. AUI threw it down, but the Observe Ward's for further up. There's a Midas for aggressive. EG. They come back for Tier 1 Town. They don't want to let it go. Aggressive loves him, I mean, not only Midas, but he's farming up all of EG's jungle right now. Oh, he's getting those stacks, but it's gonna cost them a tower. I think EG would be okay with this, even if they knew it was going on. Just means that flash farming to catch the gyrocopter up is not really gonna be there. He gets some money, in fact, uh, yeah. Aggressive gets away with it. He'll move up to the top lane, even farm that lane up. At pressure the tier 2 tower, and this stops EG from adding more pressure into the tier 2 tower on the bot lane, or even looking to attack in to CDEC, which they want to. They have a Dire Observer Ward that just scoured them going up, and in fact, a smoke move coming out here from CDEC. I'll see Universe farming up, but it looks like that's not their target. They want top, they want to kill into a tower. EG are taking the right path, though. They're completely escaping this gank. I'm not sure if they did see any of it with their ward. I think they didn't. At least they didn't ping it out. They, they saw them move up onto on the, right the hillside, side. and yeah. without any hero, with like the only hero you got showing is showing in a lane is a slot. You can put one and one together and make two, realizing it's a trap. <laughs> one and one makes a trap. Aggressive is just keeping the split push going. So this is the problem, right? You can tell EG are under pressure because they respect CDC's movements and they let them get more out of the map. Aggressive. Playing, farming up very far in the top lane, he's gonna once again start damaging this top tower. If not himself, then at least the creeps will. And XZ is also moving in position. They have a good ward here, showing them that EG aren't there. And at the same time, EG are also showing in the dire jungle. So they might flat out just lose this tier two for no trade. Oh, CDEC, they're gonna back themselves up. PPD's moving up. The trade off could be from fear on bot. And he's trying to force the lane in to get CDEC to look down south. While Samal farms up most of the Radiant Jungle. He's still a while off having that Battle Fury of his. But if they can secure the Tier 2 tower, potentially even a kill over on Garda. That'll be a nice little thing to sweeten the pot for EG. But the Familiars are coming out now from CDEC. They're having a look around. They're trying to find an opening. They just see Universe in the mid. And they're about to find Samal as well as AUI. But AUI is ha very happy with this. If we can get the last hits on them. This game is slowing down a little bit right now. I think it probably favors CDC a slight bit because of the Midas advantage they have on the Slark. Because the Lushrak is now getting his Bloodstone. 
they should be able to farm faster than EG. When it comes to pickoff potential, though, the Snark is still a very vulnerable target. If he gets caught by the Clock Skywrath, he will die from full health with no counterplay available. Of course, going for the Midas instead of a little bit of tankiness or maybe building into, say, a Mantis Dollar or a BKB first, but or a Drum, even, that we've seen from Aggressive in quite a few games, especially on his PL. It looks like he's transitioning now into an Ogre Club for now. So this could be SNY, it could be early BKB. Looking at BKB, EG have very few solutions for that until super late game. Both Ember and Gyro are spread damage carries that deal a lot of damage, but not really to that single target in the Slark. And if that's the reasoning behind getting the BKB, then I could definitely agree with going it first in this game with a Mighty. Your idol is good, but EG... As you said, though, like later in the game, it's going to look better for them. For now, they're trying to get a little bit more control of the early game by smoking up, looping around, and looking for CDEC. But CDEC are always on the other side of the map when, when these smoke ha ganks happen. So Lion's got an Invis rune. He's going to have a bit of a look around inside the Dire Jungle. Unfortunately for him, he's standing right on top of a Dire Sentry Ward. As Samal's going to walk up, Gata going to get Syrian chained up. He wasn't really ready for this one. Finger of Death is available, but Samal, Spirit Jump forward. There's already a rocket, and the Spirit Jump will allow him to get this last little tick of damage into Gata. And there she goes. There's a Flame Guard doing the work. But the Tier 2 tower still drops in favor of the top lane. I got 464 gold for that kill on the Ember, so male, getting a little bit more than I thought he would. Lion is... That brings it very close to the Ember. Yeah, he's making a lot of progress on the Ember here. And this is probably going to be one of those games where EG slow play, because their early aggression didn't really work out. They didn't get the lanes they were looking for all the time. They had to shift multiple times. They're losing both of their safe lane towers, which opens up the map a lot for especially the Slark. Now at nighttime, he's even safer, because he has the 1800 night vision. No one on the Dire team does. They do have a good ward inside their own jungle, though, and maybe that could give them a pick off. But, well, they're not going to have an aggressive effect. Let's see. Imagine this will be Assange. Nope, Link Dagger. Actually, getting the mobility first. He wants kills the casual Oyo Club for life. Rave Aquila for a little bit of regen and uh, stats. I would agree with this on Slark, though. Um, actually, getting a mobility item first. We see, I think, like 90, 95% of Slark games, you get either Blink or Shadow Blade as your first major item. Yep. Uh, aggressive prefers the Blink here. And on second thought, definitely the better choice than getting BKB. But now that he got a Blink first, I don't think he should go S and Y. Like, now, now that probably is going to come out too late for its effectiveness. And unless they get a really good fight now, in which case he might still get it. Well, for now, they're actually looking more over to just get some wards down. It is a full team smoke up here from CDEC. And EG have to be mindful of this. If they know things are not right, they're actually pinging out, saying defense, the tier one tower on bot lane. That's where CDEC are moving over to now. There's the double blink dagger combination as well. Like you've already got Garda walking around with a blink dagger on this lion. Combining it up with the Slark's movement, they can just quickly just jump in and pop any hero they really want to try and find. Now PPD puts his own Observer Ward down, so both teams having good vision over this bot lane. And Universe hook shots in. He's able to lock in aggressive. That Blade Mount not even helping him at all. Universe just evaporates. So the CDEC damage and aggressive coming in more. Blinks forward, gets a leech over on Fear. They need more damage. The Tombstone trying to help out the Finger. Not enough to kill off Fear. Gun is so low. The Mech keeping him up until the Sun comes in. Actually, he's undying. Getting the last bit of damage and Concussive Shop will sort out the Versace and Samal going in very deep. A double Searing Chain moving around as EG. Samal picking up a double kill. They move in deeper as well. Q's on the run out here. The Slide of Fist, they're getting rid of at least one of the Familiars. And the TP out from the Versace will be successful. There's no more stuns here for EG to use. And that looked like fight. that was... That looked like it was going to be a really bad fight for EG when they lost the clockwork for pretty much nothing, but it just seems like whatever team is engaging into the other gets punished really quickly. CDEC with a follow-up engage from the Slark weren't really able to follow through as Samael with a perfect timing on the Battle Fury. If he didn't have it for... He had it like 30 seconds before that fight broke out. If he wouldn't have had that, that could have looked really bad for EG, but a lot of spread damage being done. If Flags had what Bolton that kill on Garda was, that extra cash to have the Battle Fury before yeah. that one fight, it was a critical kill, and, and something which Garda really, again, couldn't have foreseen because of the Sentry Ward being there. It's a D Ward position, but that's all. Now, Aggressive looks for his opening with an Invis rune, but Samal's looking really good right now. He does not want to try and get up in his face. 
especially knowing he probably won't be able to pick up the kill anyway. Not if there's a defensive spirit floating around, which there is behind the tier one. We should also mention the mech on AUI. I'm not sure if you did. I uh, have not yet. I do believe that was in the fight as well. Yeah, it was on cooldown after the fight, so definitely helping out EG as well. We were debating whether they would be able to get a mech in time or not, uh, at least compared to CDC, who definitely got it way earlier in the darks here, but he's managed to get a decent timing on it from AUI with only 30 CS. Having Arcane's mech at, at minute around 20 is still pretty damn good. Makes a big difference in these team fights with so much spread damage coming out from both teams. Mech is one of the absolute most valuable items for its cost. It was critical for both teams during that last engagement. Looks like they're looking for another one as well now. CDEC, well then again, Hookshot, they've gone up to the top, that's aggressive, locked in here, that shadow is not going to help him too much, actually it's enough to pounce him away. They cannot keep up Evil Genius as that Slark is just way too fast. Well, we thought EG would be able to dish out a lot more damage to him before he's able to leap away. And you see Aggressive's approach to this when he gets hookshot. It's entirely possible to pounce out of Cox with Clock in there if you're facing the right direction and not catch him. But he plays it the same way every single time. He destroys the Cox instead. And being only level 1, they only take two attacks from him. He runs out a little bit and then he pounces when he's created the gap. So not taking any chances here. Very, very experienced Slark play here coming out from Aggressive. Just consistently, well, I guess you could say apart from that dive at the bottom tier one tower when he went in and they got a bad fight out of it, he's consistently been making good decisions this game. If he can keep it up too, and after having that BKB, be the critical player right now for CDEC. And speaking of BKB, Fear got it. So they're going to come out at roughly the same time, aggressive, meaning he is about, what's he ahead? About the Midas in value, a little less ahead. The other items they have are pretty comparable. Drum is a little less expensive than Blink. They both have a Quora and a 1. So they could be a lot more even. I'm still seeing Samel top with the net worth board. Now he's got this Battle Fury. He's moving very efficiently through the jungle and building into a Scardi as his next major item. So Darkseid might, be keep, might continue to push out these lanes, but I don't know, for me, man, you look at it, and EG are farming in the comfort of their own Tier 2 tower areas. There's no real pressure being applied by CDEC right now, but this will all change as finally their smoke has come back off cooldown again. They don't have another one for another 12 minutes, but there's one coming out in the Courier now. And they've got to make this count. And you just know they're going to use it right away as well, right? Yep. There's, there's no way they're saving this as I'm saying that they're saving it. Great. Okay. <laughs> Caster's Curse kicks in. <laughs> Wait, they changed their mind? No, they, they see him. The Observer Ward's watching. The stack being done with the Tombstone as well. They could try and contest it. But at the same time, Fears work through this very, very quickly. They're holding on to it for now. It looked like they... Uh, oh, they it's, now they yeah. the line. Here we go, here we go. Like I said, <laughs> they use it right away. I believed you the whole way, Syndrome. The whole way. <laughs> and then jump away. The smoke is blowing already. CDEC, this is not what they wanted from this. Samal was close enough. He just jumps back to the spirit. But they're still ready to force fights. So a BKB is now up on Shiki. So if they want to try and come under this tier one town, they can do so. The Ember's not in the most terrific fighting condition ever. As he doesn't have the Scully done just yet, aggressive. There's his movement in. They get the Hex over on Samal with the Finger of Death. Is there enough? Universe Hook shots in. Trying to push it back in the defensive spirit. Samal gets out. Leaves another one. He wants to TP back and then come back to this fight of full life. Aggressive. Needs to pound himself away, but this is BKB. The 10 second one triggered. And then will blink himself away to safety. There is a homing missile on his tail. But CDEC. There's two things in a row not really going their way. First initiation on Samal. Well, sorry, the first being the smoke, the second being the initiation on Samal. And with these big abilities down, EG have the confidence to go into the Rosh Pit. Yeah, that was such a big win for them. Finger is gone, they used two BKBs. EG didn't even use their BKB on Fear. I think this one is forfeit. If you try to fight into this as CDC now, at least you need to get a really good vacuum wall. But there's no Blink Dagger on XC. He went four staff because of the clockwork. So finding that surprise engage that we have seen from him before vacuum heroes up onto the cliff is... Pretty unlikely to happen here as they will even lose and have to resummon the familiars from Q. This is a very long cooldown as well. EG finding so many wins out of one fight. 
And this is an Aegis. Wow, hook shot down. They actually go even deeper. XZ burns for the Mystic Flare as well as the extra attack. They still lose the T1 Tower. It's a male. You're in trouble. He already pops the Aegis. He won with the same time aggressive trying to run himself out of the cooldown. Successful with that Shadow Dance. But again, these familiars, they're gonna lose both of them. That's so critical. Over two minutes without any familiars on the deck. Visage is basically a soul assumption and grave chill right now. And it's a level one grave chill too, so it's pretty weak. Oh. Carter was looking for it, but Samael quick to it jump out. So this is two minutes with CDC without familiars, which in one way is a really big problem. Oh, well, it actually is a really big problem because he can't farm his eggs. He would like to farm it and then use it when it's off cooldown, but realistically getting 600 gold in the next two minutes is not really going to happen. So if he had the familiars, he could have probably managed to get it around minute 31. Now he has to wait a little bit longer. And this time Q is going for a different build. So let's mention that because last game I was talking about his mech visage with Tranquils. This time it's Tranquils into eggs. And it's simply because the Dark Series is a better mech carrier and gets it faster. Else he would have more than likely gone for the same build once again. But those birds, I don't know if Axe is the real uh, or the right item in this game, to be honest. He's playing against Flak Cannon and Slide of Fist. He could just die really quickly. Whether you have two or three might not make the biggest of difference compared to having, say, a Solar Crest for your Slark. I agree with you, man. It's, it's one of these times where you think, okay, am I familiar even going to stay alive during the team fight? If you can have them alive and you got those three stunts to combine up with with your back into a big wall of track follow-up stunts as well, then sure, it'd be terrific. But for now, EG, they have ways to counter that. As this Ember Spirit gets closer and closer towards Skadi, even if he does get familiar drops, the Ember Spirit might be able to survive the initial attack. Knowing also the fact that Universe has always been there when the initiation has started, those hook shots, really troublesome. But to then also mention, Undying. Put a tombstone down during the fight. On CDEC, it's difficult to get a lot of space to work with. These BKBs are definitely going to help on the course, but Latrac, they really need a victory on a team fight because he's down to seven Bloodstone charges on this Lesh. Now that you mention Undying, I'm. Now that I think about it, I'm starting to worry a little bit for EG's game plan in Super Late. Yes, they have really good cores on the Gyro and the Ember, but both Skyrath and Undying really fall off. They're lane dominators, they're early mid-game oriented. AY is trying his best to stay relevant by getting a Medallion into a Crest, probably. So he's going to be, in a way, more about his items, the Mech and the Crest, than about his spells that just get flat out countered by BKB. This hero is like one of the absolute worst heroes in the game at playing against BKB carries. You're super fragile, you have absolutely no mobility, you have nothing that goes through BKB at all, mm -hmm. and you can just be singled out. So it's very important for EG that both of their cores, uh, as well as the clock who's doing a great job, keep farming so that they can still manage even with their supports definitely falling off later. CDEC are trying to put down some aggressive observer wards, and wow, these guys only just came back to life again. They can't afford to lose these familiars. One of them will drop. The resummon is still just under two minutes. So to keep our eyes on top lane, aggressive, pushing in. So someone has to TP back, and it will be some easiest play to TP back when he can just remnant back to the lane as well. This is just uh, easy movements for Evil Genius at the moment. In fact, the him with the jump from Aggressive, the hookshot from Universe. They're actually going to isolate the Slark. It's BKB TP out. No way to cancel this one. With Don't hookshot hook already shot. being used. Yep. So a smart move out. But this is still good for EG. They force out another BKB charge. CDC not really finding that much. And that is going to be an, a really important thing later in the game. That way Skyrath can be a lot more important. If these BKBs weren't even being forced out and CDC were reaching, say, like minute 40, 45 with 10 second BKBs on their carries, that Skyrath could really have a hard time. But five seconds is definitely possible for him to survive, especially with all the armor he's managed to build up with this build. He has 12 bonus armor right now. Can maybe stay alive. Universe aggressive. Trying to go for the pounce on him, but the four staff allows him just to get that rune and get out. The rune being an illusion one. Where does Samel go here? Is this just is that time where you go for the Daedalus? Yeah, I think so. You rack up the damage. You know your supports aren't going to be doing that much damage, so you and Gyro have to do it. And you have to do damage to single targets, too. Like, he can't just 
you can't just spread damage, but with the Daedalus, you hit a single target really hard if you get the right crit. In comparison to, say, uh, a Desolator, where you just spread out stable, solid damage, but not, don't get off that really big hit. I think that's definitely the way to go. See the EC again are moving into the dire jungle. Boss. You have the Agonims now completed on the Visage, so we will have Crypt Familiars. And a Crystalis on some mail, so it is going to be a Daedalus buildup. I like the fact that he stops for the Ascari on the way. Samael is known to be a very aggressive player, and um, in this game he's just realized, based on the way the fights are going, he has to tank up. If he goes for the full glass cannon build, he's going to be targeted out and have a really bad game. So he compensates for it by, by getting a really solid stat item, which is also really annoying for the Radiant to deal with. They're pretty uh, mobility-based in their fights, and just getting slowed down by the Eye of Scotty on every single target when you jump with a Slide of Fist is, is problematic to deal with for heroes like Slark and Lashrak who want to keep running you down. So C-Deck now. Are they, so how do, you, how do you even stop this right now? You got C-Deck who are holding back. They're chilling. Uh, Inside the dire jungle, they're taking a little bit of farm from here and there, but nothing's really been forced. While the Ember Spirit and the Gyrocopter continue just to, to free farm up. The slime's getting slightly bigger, but doesn't appear to be farming anywhere near the rate of evil geniuses. In fact, the EG boys are getting more experience off this map than CDEC. In fact, with a hook shot, barely missing Shiki. That would have just put them even further behind. It just feels like CDEC are battling against the clock when EG is going to be ready to force the issue and push down the lane. I'm, I'm really not so sure that's how it's going to play out because they also have a Dark Seer on the defense. Again, if you if you look at later on into the game what this lineup can provide, of course their vacuum combos are going to be difficult to land. Like vacuum into Split Earth or vacuum into Earth Spike or vacuum into Bird Stuns are all pretty pretty difficult, but they have three of them. So there's plenty of potential where one of their heroes is locked down and they can still get it. And Darkseer in the late game situation, you just know that wall is going to be effective. Like, if you get a, a copy of Gyro and a copy of Ember, those are agility carries, and the illusions will hit hard. And the stronger you get, the stronger they get. So CDEC don't only scale with their own strength, they scale with the strength of their enemy, who are definitely focusing a lot on farming those two cores, so those wall illusions will be bigger than, say, if they had spread the farm out on three or maybe even four heroes. The only way that could really backfire is if you have that Battle Fury doing work with yes. the resolutions. Absolutely. That's when you'll have some problems. But Slark can have a little bit of an easier time with those problems. Is now the full Scardi being delivered down to aggressive. He's becoming tankier and a better hunter. But both these teams are not wanting to fight. They might be forced to in a moment though. Roshan has potential spawn time in roughly five seconds. And already c -deck they're moving around the pit. So we'll have just about a one minute spawn time for Roshan. That's not too long into the counter. And there's a gem on Q. CDEC are preparing for that situation to arise. And EG with pretty much black map. They have one, which is very defensively placed around Universe's position right now. I think, do they have two? No, they have one. And a couple of sentries to go with it. But mainly looking for aggressive CDC wards that they either countered or just were never placed. Samel is putting some pressure. There's another sentry being placed. Yeah, he got scouted out by the Visage, though. He pinged it straight away. They can get rid of this and then the jump in. They find Samel out of position. Tombstone, Solrim, Samel needs more time. The back into the wall! BB is going to go down! Fear trying to do as much damage as he can with the Hawks from Universe. There's a little bit more control time here, but CDC, they're just so tanky. Visage will at least pop inside the cogs. And that's the gem on the ground. They can move forward and grab it for themselves. As Samael, in comes Lion again for the stuns, trying to combine it with the familiars. Shiki, real trouble for him. Yule set the Zuppers guard, cannot help him out. But he's got more help. Aggressive at the front line, but Fear pushing in after Aggressive. They split the fight. Besides, took out the Ember Spinner over with those spirits aggressive. He'll still go down. Now, mopping up the familiars. The last attack in from Aoi will take care of it. And this is why Sumail got a Scotty. If he did not have a Tang item there, he would have been blown up and that fight would have gone horribly. But instead, he manages to disengage. The, the burst damage from CDC is not enough because of a superb soul rip coming out from uh, for PPD there. And they are managed to they managed to turn the fight around, which is really incredible for me, considering the vacuum wall from XC was also good, but just managed to buy enough time for the spread damage of multiple slides of fist and of course the flat cannon and call down that a lot of them tanked. 
was enough in the end. And big fight for Evil Geniuses, even though they lose some mail there. With how that fight was initiated, I think they're going to be very satisfied with the outcome. Especially if they can take Roshan. PPD is going to commit his ulti for this, as well as the Tombstone to help him out. He has got the damage for it. They don't want to kill this off too early unless they're going to give the Aegis. In fact, they'll have to give the Aegis the mortal over to fear, as Tamali is still dead for another 13 seconds. CDEC won't get there in time. They don't have enough people anyway if they do arrive there. And it will be the Aegis, the Immortal, and Roshan going the way of evil geniuses. Even though they don't get it on Samael, it's better that they get it not just to have it on fear, but also so it's not on the ledge. Like, you really don't want to play against the Lathrak with, uh, with an Aegis here. Shiki would really love that too. Like he's got five Bloodstone charges. He can't survive during these engagements. The Yule Sept is being used defensively to try and have, like, just avoid EG's attacks. But that's not going to be enough. They need to actually have that first EG hero. Lock down Samael. Moving forward, if he has a bit of a peek, you'll see the Dark Seer start a fist searing chain actually on XZ. He tried to surge away the hook oh. shot. He was expecting the surge to just make him run, but the, the chains last a little bit too long. So the hook shot's off target. Yeah, that's an uncharacteristic and unfortunate miss there from Universe that would have more than likely ended up in a kill. Aggressive was going to turn it around by walking into the dire jungle. I don't know if it was really going to work, however. Who got the gem after the fight, by the way? Did the Radiant recover it or did they lose it? They uh, lost it. Right? Or did they put in base? No, no, Where is it? It should have been recovered. Uh, who has the It's on Courier. It's on the Courier of the Dire side. Yep. So and now delivered over to AUI 2000. So EG managed to steal the gem of XC, which even furthers their victory in that team fight. Just good times all round for EG. They're still, like, this game is still so even. The gold, there's not even a difference of a thousand in it. The experience, however, is a different tale. As Evil Geniuses have about 5 to 5k on the experience going their way. And they're going to smoke up and see if they can force the issue a little bit more. Yeah, they, they want to take advantage. Over. They're going to come right on the side of Aggressive Universe. She hugging the side so he knows there's someone. Well, actually, he doesn't know if he's on the right or the left. And Universe actually not visible at all to see the EC, but they caught a glimpse. And so the Darks here and then farming up that camp, you could hook shot yourself into that. But the rest of EG will have, have a hard time following him in. There's multiple key items coming out on CDEC, by the way. They just got a Force Staff on the Lion. They got a BKB on the Darks here. And they got... Oh, he's got him! Mid pounce! Aggressive real trouble! With a rocket also coming in, homing missile's gonna connect. He can't break free of the stun. The cooldown will come with an AK. He's able to at least pounce himself away to safety. But they go for more! The side of searing chain catching on XE and aggressive. He still run himself away inside the channel. It's the back into a four-man ball. EG will still try to trigger one of their BKBs and Shiki. She isolates on the backside. Try to TP out of the cover of a BKB. He'll be successful. In fact, a finger of death ensures the kill on universe with the spirit jump up. Samel also wants to find his target. Got it back into the lane, aggressive, waiting it out. He's regenerating up and ready to come in. Fear this isn't the path to freedom right now. He's gonna get locked in, aggressive. Where's your damage? It's all there. He's stealing the essence of fear out of him. The Aegis Sea Mortal will trigger, but Samal's still here, but the Familiar's coming in. The Suns are back off cooldown, so they can keep fear locked. They go back in again. The Mystic Fletcher on Bison Space with a back back in. Garda, he's burning right now the shield of Samael. While the battle's still going on the back lines, fear needs more help. Can't find it though. He's gonna pop. They might get these steering chains, but Samal will hit the deck. Started fisting around. They need to bring him down. They're going to. Slowing him down, and it will be enough. The fight goes the way of CDEC. PPT was trying to come back to help, but it was all too late. And what a fight. Huge advantage, and now they can force down the mid lane for the tier two tower. This is the kind of fights that Slark just thrives in when. He can't get focused and locked down, but gets multiple attacks off and just steals what ends up being 60 agility in that fight with his essence shift, just laying into fear, forcing out the Aegis. Then whenever he drops to half health, he just disengages and re-engages really quickly, comes back with full health again. And that's the problem EG have with their draft, right? They keep spread damaging, but they, they don't focus aggressive down fast enough. So the longer the fight extends, the stronger this Slark gets. And if you look at that fight, that, that was absolutely crazy. There were so many plays in that fight. And of course, what started the whole thing was the patience of Aggressive. I cannot believe he was patient enough with his BKB that he didn't get for more. And he earlier. comes with a double damage room, chasing up the universe. The mech will be triggered right now from AUI and Aggressive going in deeper again with a BKB triggered. 
He's actually attacking into oh, the tier the 3 fell. tower. Oh. He's got blink still. Hook shot. Right, it's up. Gonna try. So if Samel was alive, they would have gone for that, I think. But he's the only one who can catch up, so he would have got himself into a horrible position there with him. Yeah. The Slark, as I was saying in that previous fight, super patient, uses the BKB very late, which helps a lot in the fight. And in contrast to that EG, they got forced to using their BKBs by the four-man vacuum wall. And that's what opened up the fight to Slark when he knew Fear didn't have the magic immunity. As these BKBs start dropping in time, all this money which, C which CDC are picking up, like, I suppose the Abyssal Blade doesn't really care that much once Slark completes that. But you managed to gain yourself almost 7,500 net worth in favor of CDEC. Even the experience kicks up by almost 10,000 as well. It's a huge swing. Evil geniuses, they may be staring down the barrel of, of a lost TI5 grand final, or at least this game. And CDEC, they can group up again. Are we sitting at a smoke point now? We're not. It's still just a five-man movement. I think if you're CDC right now, you want to slow play. You want to wait for the next Rosh, or... Like, there are two ways of looking at it. Either you fight right now, so Roshan, in case you lose the fight, can't respawn yet. Or you play it slow and you look for the gank when Roshan is about to have a potential spawn. Now, knowing CDC, they probably want to fight right now, because <laughs> they want to fight all the time, but... They're not the only team looking to do it right now. Yep, EG. They're gonna go for the loop around, so you leave Samal on the front lines. And you bring the other four from the rear. Well, it's gonna work out very well if they catch Garter first. That Observer was still down though. The smoke might break, but you're right, Garter is a long, long way in the back. The smoke's actually going to break here for EG Universe. Hawk shots up with the battery assault. It should be out of control. Garter and Samal jumps further down. Universe four stopping up, and Garter can't do anything about it. If he turned around to attack, and the Blade Bell would have just killed him anyway, it was the Undying Minions doing their work. So a good smoke from EG. They do find the Lion, and they confuse a very tense situation with CDEC around their bottom tower. They do, however, not get any collateral. There's no tower they can claim. There's no Roshan yet. And I don't know if that was the timing EG was looking for. I think they just aren't happy with just finding a line. They were looking for a way bigger kill than that one, but CDC immediately disengaging when they realize that they're kind of being pincered in with Ember from above and the four others from below. Get out with one casualty. At the very least for EG, though, it opens up the map. Yep. Get to push bottom. Maybe they do get a collateral after all. Looks like CDC don't want to defend this tower, so... Smoke for Lion and Tower, I think, is okay. Aggressive is coming. Is they're ready for Roche with another smoke, or if they're on cooldown for both teams. They actually use their fortification. Familiar's coming in close, too. He is in the neighborhood. And Samal doesn't want to risk himself. He's 10 gold away from completing up the Daedalus. So all he wants is just that last hit to survive. Yeah, they have to get the hell out of there. They're TPing up. Pushing. Universe, where's that hook shot? He already got stunned the first time he arrived. The rocket will give him the vision of the Lashrak, and there's your hook shot up. He's able to get himself away, pushing the Lashrak back. But where is your stun? You don't have anything to, to penetrate the magic immunity. And there's definitely not, not, not enough damage to kill him before the end of the TP. And now see the EC. It's smoke time again. Right, big item alert here for Ember Spirit grabbing the... Daedalus, there's also going to be a four staff now coming out for AUI, so a couple of big items for them going into this fight that could just give them the little edge they need. Oh, Clockwork. But yes, yes, he's got the used, and well, no, Samal not caught. The tombstone will drop in fear, trying to battle it up. He did get actually mashed up for a moment, but Aggressive is not winning this fight. He has to pounce himself away. PB is going to stick with him, and there's your Searing Chain. Another Decay, he's going to drop in live, but at the same time, a quick run out of here. You've got a Yule set the rock, going to keep Ember Spirit out of the fight for the moment. Aggressive found a DD. Oh, that's a nice little rune to have. You can come back into the fight if you can, but EG, they're trying to isolate both Q as well as Garda. We got caught the bottom river, but these familiars, they're already attacking to AUI 2000. And he is not sure about this either. He did a little bit of chip damage, but EG, they're just not finding that one hero out of position for CDEC. It was so important that Samela did not mess up the first fire and then if he didn't activate that properly and get out of there and he got caught by the lion, that would probably have been game. He didn't have buyback, he just caught the Daedalus and I think at this point CDC might actually have enough burst damage to bring him down. Crucial. And he stays calm here under pressure for EG. 
As CDEC are looking to advance again. They have BKB on Oh, now. that's a jump from aggressive. Ryan's up a fear. Goes for the instant bash as well. The cooldown's coming in. Fear being forced up the way. They're trying to make it run. And actually, they forced up up on the outside the cogs. Shiggy was trying to come in from the other side of the fight. But now they use the Mystic Flare. Well, actually, on absolutely nothing. It just keeps uh, CDEC off the ramp up into the secret shop. Yeah, Flare is gone. The Tombstone is gone. Actually, it's spawning zombies that get stuck because of the familiars. <laughs> Someone need a tango. Free the zombies. EG. And so Tombstone's down. It's down for another 30 seconds, but CEC are in no real hurry to try and push this in just yet. There's still a creep wave to get back in back under control. They absolutely have to get back to this pit now. Roshan's respawned. There's no doubt that EG will be looking to scout this out in a moment as Samael claims the Ancients. They know Shiki is top, so they feel pretty confident moving around into this area. The rocket's gonna scout it. This fight is... So I think if CDEC get the Aegis on the Lesh and they don't lose a fight to get it, they have... They easily have the potential to push high ground. For EG, they need to get it just so CDEC don't get it. I'm not sure EG can convert it into racks, but... I'm feeling really confident for CDEC that they should be able to with their current state of items on their heroes. This slugs, Here we go. This slugs and they, but there's still the Observe Ward on the cliff side, just behind Roshan. So AUI is very visible, including Universe. His Press positioning is very well known. They're taking too long. Yep, they're Each not going to get, get here in free. time. This is Roshan, Aegis the Immortal into the hands of Samalash. is going to be the cheese into his hands. It's Gyro with the Aegis, an aggressive, locked inside the pit. And back, he's got him on the wall again. But then again, he just turns on the damage with the call down. They're trying to escape. They have to get him off the hillside. Where are these four stuffs? Samael is down. There's a four star from AUI. They're out. The Lion, the only casualty during that fight, but the rest of CDEC are trying to bail out of here. EG taking a big risk, and it pays off. If CDEC catch them in there with a vacuum combo, they're in a lot of trouble, but EG were fast enough. I don't think CDEC expected it to go that quickly, and they missed their timing there on it. Very, very important for EG to grab this for fear, and doesn't look like they're scared to try to push for for a lane of Rex here, or at least the tier two, as, yeah, they have a lot of unclaimed towers still to get. There are three towers behind CDEC. Universe. A lot of gold here. Uh, Q. He doesn't really want to try and fight this one. Man, why wouldn't you want to push that? Like, you've got insurance over on the Ember Spirit having this cheese available. Absolutely, take the tier two. Yeah. I think they go bottom as well. Or maybe even top and try to get both towers there. Uh, maybe even look for a fight as Fear's in trouble. He'll let the call down go, but there's your Abyssal Blade. It's still not going to stop Fear from pumping in a little bit more of this damage. They need the BKB to wear off so they can force off him down the cliff face, but it's not going to happen. Aggressive just keeps fighting, and Garda, they've actually isolated with a double zone. Samal as well as PPD. XE's keeping him out. The agency model is triggered right now, but Samal, Slider Fitz, he needs more units to actually get the bounce off. Fear dying to familiars. Aggressive, they need more help. Mastic Flash coming in from AUI. Aggressive still alive until the orb is chasing him up. He should be able to find this with a blink away. He's buying time to regenerate. While PPD battling up against the rest of the familiars. Oh, the sun God, comes down. Live. The Glimmer Cape will keep him alive. AUI will regather the gem now. They can't get rid of these familiars. And Samael, well, he doesn't really want to fight either. He does have the cheese available, but they burned the Aegis and they lost the Gyro. These fights are so extremely close. It's absolutely incredible how no one gets a, like a, just a decent lead in the fight and is able to snowball through, but all of the mobility that both teams have, the BKBs, the four staffs, the blink from Slark, they just keep kiting very well and aggressive with another great fight there, by the way. He goes in on fear, makes sure he steals a lot of, of stats here and just kites around using the BKB at the latest possible moment. And of course, I'm not sure what we actually had on the camera that people were seeing there because there was like two fights going on at once. Saw the jump on Fear in the fight there, but of course the split fight with the Darkseer as well as the Lion and for EG, the Skyrath Clock and the Ember. And a full duration Tombstone, by the way. Very important in this fight for EG that that does not get countered early on. I believe we actually saw both on the camera. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the wonderful ability of Zoom. Zoom is good. So EG, you've j you, you keep having these close fights. Actually, both EG and C-Deck, how do you get the upper hand? Like, what's the goal here? Because right now, it, for me, you look at the cores, and the cores are farming quite equally. Like, Aggressive comes in with his Abyssal Blade and Scarty. It's like, okay, well, I'll go up against the Gyrocopter. It's a fairly even battle, even with, like, Monkey King Bar and Butterfly over on Fear. Everything's just even Stevens. And then you got this Ember going up against Latrak, who now looks to be very close to completing up his Scythe of Vice. 
I making him even stronger. I think if you're CBC, you look for another fight without the Aegis, because you've proven time and time again that you can shut down fear in the fights with aggressive on Slark. So if they can do that again, they'll be in a really good position. For EG, I think it's more about pushing out the waves, maybe slow playing a little bit. If they're looking to push this top tier one, they could be in a really bad position if they get cornered by the Slark here. Should maybe try to slow play and wait for the, even the next Aegis and playing for the really, really late game. It's a long time. CDEC, they haven't oh, got oh, that they patience in this game. Item. Yep, they're coming. It's the Lincoln Sphere for Samael. That changes things quite a bit. That actually means this side device from Shiki is not going to be as fantastic. For CDEC, do you really want to try and defend this? They're going to use a smoke. Four heroes in it. They have to know most of EG is on this top lane. Because they started running towards the mid and then they just all of a sudden did a 180. And turned the other direction. But that tower on the top is almost down. The rocket's scouting it out for EG. Obviously, they're not going to see anything with these smoked heroes. And Lashrak will just deny the tower. While the Familiars are the ones doing the split push. They're pushing up middle lane at the moment. But EG want these remaining towers. We're going to get a resummon of the Familiars as well from Q. So they're actually ready to fight. I think he had one of them dead, so... One or two. They're actually going to give... Nah, oh, are they giving this away? It looks like it. Oh, and again, a whole no! shot down. They're going to find Shiki. He'll BKB, but is there enough damage to get the kill? So Mal can't reach him. He tried to slide a fist in, but the Colts actually kept him out. So CDC, they know that hook shot's going to be on cooldown for another 23 seconds. Familiar's preparing to come in from the side. Fear, remember he's got that BKB. And samal has got that Lincoln Sphere up and running, so the initial attack won't be as easy. And the fake side of Fist trying to keep him back. In comes Aggressive, triggers the BKB. PPD already with the Tombstone down. They may not have enough of an opening, in fact, maybe they will. They found Aggressive locked inside the cogs while over on the side. Fear is keeping the Passage out, and they're the back, trying to go for the wall. They get it perfectly with Shiki Pulse, and over the more damage. Samael gets a side of Fist off. He's so low on life, but now a little bit more. They can't even get him out. There's more damage coming in with Oshrak. So low on life, Aggressive turns on the fight, going on Fear. The stuns are there. PPD back to front line, trying to remove that life away from the Slark, and they keep going. The seal is on him. He can't pound away. They lock him inside the cops. Aggressive is down. Huge kill. Shiki no longer hiding in the trees. It's not safe there. The line is back to base and so is XC. A huge fight for EG. An invitation to force buybacks here from CDC. If they can that, push into the tier threes. That cheese on fear. Perfect timing using that. And CDC will have to buy back one, if not even two heroes, if they want to hold this lane. They're buying Shiki back for now. They don't want to have the Slark, though. And Shiki already getting concussive shot at XZ. The back will come. They look for the Sun and only connects over on Fear while Universe pushing aggressive back. The cops are keeping him out while the side of Fist goes again from Samal. Defensive Spirit jump, and they're all trying to TP out. They got their double buybacks. That's what they're looking for. And aggressive. Abyssal Blade is still available. Blink Dagger off cooldown. And in fact, Samal up in the air with the Yorza. Blink is feeling trigger, but Samal, he's going to go down. CDEC, they get something back for their buybacks. In the meantime, the middle lane, there's no tier three tower here. The Kree Ray pushed in, and it's already assaulting onto the melee racks. And that also works. on bottom lane, look at that farm down there. It's heaven for a Visage. So many range creeps, he'll just soak up a lot of that. That was still a very expensive hold for CDC, having to buy back their two biggest cores here. But they then they forced it from EG yeah, They as forced well. one out from EG in turn, so it's not that bad. But Fear not having to buy back here in order to hold is going to give EG a pretty big bump in the relative strength between these two teams. And now we're down to the next Roshan. EG got so much out of the last one. The Aegis helped them win a fight. The Cheese, same story, also helped them win a fight and even force out those buybacks. They can get the next one. CBC, this time they simply can't let it happen. Like, they have to be there earlier. Uh, Aggressive was pinging it out last time, but the reaction from his team wasn't fast enough. And I'm, I'm positive they will be fighting for this one. This game, just when you think someone's gaining an advantage, the graph just swing almost back to zero. The gold graph actually was a very steep dive to 2,500, but the experience <laughs> practically on the zero mark. Not a lot in this game at all. At it, the gold. Still anyone's. It's, it actually went down for the first time, but then it instantly spikes zero. back up. Actually, this game is completely dead even. Then the question is who utilizes the golden experience better? But that just comes down to team fight execution. Like you, talk, you can talk about buybacks and everything else, but you, you're kind of looking at everything both teams want. That side device, once Lashrak takes out this camp here, 
he'll have the money to purchase it. That means there obviously is no buyback because he already spent his money on this. But the Jaro has spent his cash. Actually, it's a smoke move from EG. They're coming up to the Radiant Ancients and they're gonna find C deck, but not where they really want to. They need to get up. Aggressive is starting to run away from his team. Oh, he can lose the side. Catch. The Courier's coming in with the rest of the side. It's so close to the trap. They missed the hook shot in. They need that Courier dead right now. It's on the run out. And actually, he doesn't even want to turn to pick up the side. Now I'll turn around. Okay, that's just free gold that they're not taking. But they move up. There's your Searing Chains over on the track. BKBs from both. As Aggressive also jumps in. Looking for the BK. The Abyssal uh, by Trigger and Universe. Hawk shots up. Pushes the Slark back. There's no BKB, but Shadow Dance is available. The Tombstone will split this fight up. If CDC want to come in through the rear, but now they're running over to the dire side of the jungle. Chasing in, Zamal right behind him, has a blink dagger off cooldown. Another hook shot gonna go to work. They find their opening. It's a lion down. Q also being slowed down by that concussive shot. Locked inside the cops in the middle of the river. He needs a path to freedom. It just doesn't exist. It's Samal. He even goes in deeper on the back of Shiki. The sun will be available. They back him back in. There's still the defensive spirits available. Side of fist. And maybe there is enough damage. Aggressive. Siri chained up. They need the damage. Fast up away. Aggressive goes back to left. It's a huge trouble trying to run himself out of the cops. Fall start down the line. And this is real trouble right now for CDEC. Shiki down in the tree line as well. There are no buybacks available. Lion, the sole survivor. The only thing that is stopping this game right now is a Kreeway pushing the tier 4 tower or the tier 3 tower in the bottom lane. But that's no real problem. Now Spirit jump back out. And EG, they are coming for the mid lane. They should be able to at least mega <laughs> right now. They have a full minute on three cores on the enemy team. And what's really important about that fight for EG is the way they initiate and the way they flank. They move in from two different directions. Darkseer is never able to really find the vacuum wall. As a matter of fact, he probably holds the wall too long there and ends up getting a, a pretty mediocre one when the fight is over. Lion never gets a spell off, gets killed. They're going too for the early. GG push. They're actually just going straight for the GG push. They want to see that to admit defeat. They 